Hi, this is Ellen McDonnell, and we're beginning the analysis B of case 1. Dr. Uh, Shadar is first going to be describing the remedies that he has chosen. And we're first going to discuss why he's chosen these remedies. And we want to know what makes Kelly I and Rose Tox prominent. Dr. Shadar says, as you see, if you consider the last two symptoms that have a prominent peculiarity, there remain two remedies, Kelly I and Ristox. By prominent peculiarity, he means remedies having modalities, not being common, etc. So which one is best of these two, Kelly I or Ristox? Now, I've, this is a picture of his analysis, and which remedies have both of the small specific rubrics 8 and 9? Okay, so we're looking at 8 and 9 here in red, and these are small rubrics. With, I mean, they have few remedies in them. And you see here, here's 8 and 9 represented here, and Kelly I and uh, Rustox are, are located here. And they both have these small rubrics. Now, I'd like to know why he didn't choose rubrics 5, 6, and 7, these rubrics here. He chose these here, and he got this, this repertorization. Why didn't he choose these? If you do a, um, an, an analysis using 5 and 8 and 9, you come up with, I, 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 I tried this analysis. But first of all, I guess I should say, he probably didn't choose this because they're, it's not statistically significant. If it's over like 160 remedies in the, in the rubric, it's not going to be statistically significant. These are way above that number. Well, not this one here, but it's, this is still pretty, very high, so it's not going to be very significant. It's not going to help you to individualize the remedy. But 38 rubric remedies, that's not so high. Why didn't he use this one? Why didn't he choose number 5? Okay, let's just take a look. So I repertorized the three rubrics that he, th these three rubrics. These are the ones that he used, and this is the one he didn't use. Well, Kali I and Rustox are not represented in Lassitude, Morning in Bed. So that rubric does not not support the other rubrics. That's why he didn't choose it. Okay, so this is, this is the total repertorization here. Okay, so these rubrics are too big, and this one didn't support. Now, he's asking why didn't, which one is better, Kali uh, iodinum or Rustox? And I'd like you to use your space bar to stop the video and take some time to do research and to think. When you're doing a web sem seminar, you have the luxury to be able to take your time. Okay, so use that space bar in a smart way. And compare Rostox to this case. Okay, so you, you have to look in your own uh, Materia Medica to see what, the, uh, what Rostox looks like. And, well, I've done it, and I hope you stopped your, rem your uh, video. But Rustox is cold and, and dislikes damp. He's worse with cold and damp. So he's not the warm person who's in this uh, the case one. He's physically restless, but not especially talkative. He's not mentally restless. He's physically restless. His throat is worse after getting cold, not from a chronic infection of the, of the uh, throat. And this person has a 20-year-old infection. It's chronic. Uh, and Rustox is very famous for skin eruptions, but we see no skin eruptions in this case. Did you find these symptoms in your Materia Medi Medica? These are the symptoms for Cali I. Our knowledge of Materia Medica supports Cali I. Cali I is anxious, talkative, warm-blooded, Aggravations from heat, 
susceptibility for thyroid derangements, throat affections aggravated by talking, better walking in open air. Okay, these are all characteristics of Kelly, uh, Kelly I. So it fits our case very well. Now, I'd like to ask, why didn't he use iodinum? I'm, you know, I'm not just going to be passive. I'm going to ask some questions to Dr. Shadar, okay? Because iodinum, if you look in your um, own Materia Medica, you'll see that iodine is very warm, but it's very warm. It's very hot. It's worse walking in open air. It has swollen, indurated, uh, it means they are hard, the glands become hard. Um, thyroid derangement. So the, the problem is in the thyroid. So this is the same as our case. It has loquacity, it talks a lot, and it's hurried. It's in a hurry. But you know, when I looked at this, I realized iodine is really quite different from Kali iodine. Okay, iodine is pure iodine, and it expresses a deeper disease. The symptoms are more extreme. It's what's called a halogen. Halogen. So here, here you see iodine here. And at, at nine, it doesn't have this, this one symptom. It doesn't have throat pain talking aggravates. Okay. But that's just one one individualizing symptom. But it has every other symptom. It has it has this um, lassitude morning in bed aggravates, which Kali iodinum doesn't have and Rustox doesn't have. So it seems pretty strong to me. What's wrong with it? Now, if you look here at the, this is the uh, periodic table. Here are the halogens. Okay, the halogens are here. These are all used in um, medicines and they're very strong medicines. It's a poison, it's a toxin. Hmm? Kali, nat, 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 natrium, magnesium, calcium, these four are just very, very common um, parts of the body, uh, elements used in the body. They're organic and they're extremely common. Uh, so they're hardly toxin. They're not toxic at all, they're very toxic at all compared to um, these halogens. Okay. So if you have a remedy like Kali I that's a combination of these, of course, it's not going to be as toxic as the one that's pure, a pure halogen. Okay, so the symptoms are not going to be nearly as extreme in this remedy, and they aren't. So the ne Latin, the next thing you need to think is: Do you think Sh Dr. Shadar has a strong argument? When I do a case, I always pretend I'm arguing before a judge. And I think, do I have an argument that's convincing? Okay, I'm, I'm making an argument, and am I really convinced with my argument? They say, um, someone said, the case needs three legs for stability. It's a stool that needs to have three legs. Well, in this case, we have the common rubrics are too big to be statistically significant. And these two rubrics, mind anxiety while walking, throat pain talking, it has these two legs. And this is a kind of a mental symptom. Um, and this one here is, is a physical symptom. And he's talkative. Okay, so, but it's only two legs. It's, 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 it's very weak. It's a very weak argument. So he is looking for more evidence. Dr. Shazara says, can we find any other confirmatory evidence? Okay, confirmatory. In Catholicism, um, young adults, teenagers, are they go through a confirmation process where they study their Catholic beliefs and they are confirmed in, in a religious ceremony. Uh, judges and um, political appointees people are also confirmed. Somebody has to say, yes, these are good people. So Dr. Shadar is looking for someone, some argument to confirm, to support or deny his findings. Okay. The Repertorium Verosum is designed to provide a confirmatory method in homeopathy. Dr. Shadar says, 
IM is caused by Epstein-Barr virus, EBV. We can look at the manifestations of EBV primary infection as a substitute for the part of the case that has been forgotten by the patient. Now this, this term, primary infection, this means it was the EBV came and it caused IM. So it's the primary infection. We're not looking at the primary infection. The primary infection was forgotten. Okay, The puzzle piece is missing. And so what we're using is Dr. Shadar's research on EBV and his repertorization of the symptoms to fill in the space that was forgotten by the patient. Okay. Miasmatic analysis is a confirmatory method. We do classical analysis first, if possible. Then we do miasmatic analysis, if necessary and useful. So this is a, a photo of Dr. Shadar's um, repertory, and he's already done the repertorization. Okay. And he's picked out his, his, his miasm as Epstein-Barr virus, EBV. And here are his, uh, the remedies. Maybe, I don't know if you can see clearly on your screen, but Kelly I is number eight. It's fairly low down here, you know. And these are the, this is, these are the strongest candidates. These are the next strongest and third strongest, okay. So it's not the top remedy necessarily, but what is the miasm? A miasm is caused by a cont contagious pathogen that often produces some predictable disease and symptoms. Why is EBV the miasm and not IM? This is kind of a, maybe a silly question, but hey, you know, when I first didn't know what IM was and EBV was a new word, I was confused. So EBV is a virus. IM is the name of a disease that is caused by Epstein-Barr virus. It's sometimes caused. It's not always caused by Epstein-Barr virus. EBV is a pathogen causing many diseases and syndromes. So it, it causes minor inflammations throughout the body and it attacks certain organ, organs. All of these organs are organs with many lymph cells. Okay, the lymph cells are, there are lots of lymph cells and there are many uh, and, and lymph nodes in the organ. Or this is a map of the organs of the body uh, that have um, many lymph cells. And also it attacks areas of the body that have lymph cells. Okay, it, it, uh, you'll notice that some of these, this is not included, the thymus is not included, and um, there's no discussion of the intestines, lymph, lymph nodes, uh, in most of the literature. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't, I didn't see these particular ones mentioned, and it has to do with the kind of infection, what the, the process of causing an infection. Okay, we're not going to go into that. But when you look at a list like this, you kind of look at what is not included. And you know, sometimes that's easier to remember. Okay. And, you know, this, it causes some very, very serious diseases. For example, cancer and immune deficiency diseases. This disease uh, picture that you see here has to do with killing lymph, lymph cells. Lymph cells become deformed, so they become unable to uh, to to work. So they, to do their function, which is to protect the body, and so you get immune deficiency automatically, and you get syndromes that lack names, and those are the ones who come to homeopaths a lot. So EBV is only one cause of IM, and there are other vi viruses that cause IM. The next case is going to be. Um, one of those uh, viruses. So 
because of this, you have to repertorize. You can't just say, oh, I know enough about IB, uh, EBV and I think I'll just choose. It, you, you really have to uh, use serious research. You don't need to really memorize all the detail about IM. You have to know that EBV, uh, uh, well, you don't have to memorize the detail about IM. I really meant to write EBV. You have to remember that EBV is a systemic disease. This means it, cons it involves the entire system, the wh whole body. This, and it affects the, in, in, especially the lymphatic system. So all the, you know, you don't have to memorize this. This isn't part of uh, learning this method. But we go into some detail so you understand what the thought process is. Um, so you're going to plan to look up symptoms in the RV just as you would do in any homeopathy, homeopathic case. You use a symptom re uh, miasm repertory and you do not memorize symptoms. Okay, this is, that's not part of it. Dr. Starr says, if you consider a presupposed EBV epidemic as the genus Epidemicus and repertorize its landmarks, you will find a set of remedies. They can be repertorized in the Repertorium Virosum software. And a landmark tells you where you are. Okay, so he's saying that you repertorize the, the landmarks of EBV. Okay. And this word landmark, every disease, every place in the world has its landmarks, okay? Every disease also has its landmarks, its characteristic symptoms, okay? Just like the places in the world. Landmarks of a disease are the characteristic symptoms of the disease. Use the repertory by entering your case symptoms. If they are landmarks of a miasmatic disease, you can use the RV again to find the remedies that can cure that disease. Most of us do not know the disease landmarks, but we know our case. All symptoms should be considered, but those which are recurrent, confirmed, and more peculiar should be given more value. Okay, this is just basic homeopathy, what everybody has learned. And those are the rules that Dr. Shadar also used in selecting landmarks. Landmarks are recurrent, they're confirmed, they're more peculiar. Aspects of each disease, each um, miasma, miasm, each uh, epidemic disease.